let me phrase it correctly. Because it's not the best backup quarterback. It's subjective. It's the backup quarterback in whom you have the most faith. Go. There's some good ones out there. Uh, I think the first one that I, you know, I might go with, it, it, there is. There's, there's a difference here in who you have faith in and who you think's better. And, you know, backup quarterbacks, it, it depends on the situation here a little bit. Um, but I think one that, you know, of course, that how could you not have faith in Tyrod Taylor as a backup? That, that would be one that just right off the bat jumps out to me. You know, he's, he's played a lot of football. He can make some plays with his legs. And, you know, he's not – when he does get thrown into those type of environments, he, he, since he's played, he's, he's not going to be flustered. So I, I look at him to handle those situations, you know, pretty damn well. I don't necessarily mean that there's some quarterbacks that I think are better than him that are actually backups, but I have confidence that he can come in and handle the situation, handle the defense, what they're doing, offense, all of that. So uh, I'll go with Tyrod Taylor there. Well, we've been talking about a quarterback who is now a backup who was once a Super Bowl MVP. There is one quarterback who's still a backup who won a Super Bowl MVP as a backup. Nick Foles, the ultimate backup. You want to have faith in a guy. It's Jekyll and Hyde. If he's the starter, he's horrible. If he's the backup, he's incredible. He's just wired a certain way. I don't yeah. know what it is. I don't know how it is. And I doubt that he understands what it is or how it is. He cannot perform consistently well under the pressure of being the guy. You make him the backup to the guy and you press him into service and something comes over him. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It is. It's inexplicable. And if it happens, and I don't know if you've watched any of the Colts bills over the weekend, I mean, Nick Foles did not look good, but I don't care about that. What I care about is if the Colts need him at some point in the season to replace Matt Ryan, I have more faith in him than any other number two quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. And, and you're right. There is something about that psychological element of you know, there's a different set of pressure on you as compa you know, starter compared to backup. And for whatever reason, he doesn't necessarily handle the starting pressure all that well. But when he comes off the bench, um, seems to kind of thrive in that environment. Um, I'll go with Case Keenum. I got great faith in Case Keenum. Uh, I, I do just to, you know, hold down the fort again. And you know, not that I always look at some of these guys that they're going to go out and win games and maybe be the best option for an eight game stretch, but man, you got to play two or three games and, you know, settle the team down and, and manage the game that way. Case Keenum's a good athlete. He's a good arm, you know, and he's smart. And there's a reason he's been hanging around the NFL for as long as he has. He's, you know, one of those guys that you know, just knows how to play the game and, uh, you know, knows how to take care of the football. So Case Keenum's a guy that I would certainly have a lot of a lot of respect for in that in that manner. Think back to 2019. The Chiefs had Matt Moore hold the fort down for a short period of time, and they ended up winning the Super Bowl while Patrick Mahomes recovered from that knee injury suffered on a Thursday night against Denver. I'm going Teddy Bridgewater yeah. simply because I'm if 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 that offense needs the backup in lieu of Tua Tonga I think they'll be just as good, if not better, with Teddy Bridgewater. Why not? Remember when he first signed, there was that weird day or two yeah, where right. Teddy created the impression. You called him out a little bit for maybe being a little presumptuous, maybe mischaracterizing Start, what his pot. role was yeah. going to be. Right. Creating kind of in a passive-aggressive way a controversy. But I think if the Dolphins need him, I mean, that's part of determining faith in your backup. What's the drop-off from one to two? With the Dolphins, sorry to and on, I don't think there's a drop off. Uh, I, I don't disagree with you there either. I mean, we saw just a few years ago. He's another guy. He's I, I, he's better as a backup than he is as a starter. You know, it's, it's Carolina, Denver. It's eh. came in for the Saints on that team. The middle of the year, you know, he's not asked to carry the team. The team can adjust and kind of manage the game a different way for a few games with that guy. You know, that's what I think we're talking about here. And you know, I, I do think there's other backups that are more talented that I would maybe trust throughout the long season. But, yeah, these guys here, they're, they're, you're right. You don't worry about it. You don't worry about them getting in out of the huddle and missing a check or missing a blitz or, or stuff like that. And uh, that's where they give you great confidence because they got the reps that way. All right, next one I'm going to go with. Well, we're going with all – I'm going to go with a new age one. I mean, Andy Dalton's out there. I know that. But – I'm going to go with one of these new guys, Tyler Huntley. I got great confidence in Tyler Huntley in, in Baltimore. 
I mean, again, he just diced them up again this past weekend in ten, you know, against Tennessee Titans. What was he, 16 for 18 or 14 for 16? He's smart. He's accurate throwing the football. And then he can make some plays off schedule when he needs to. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think Baltimore, they got, yeah, they got something there. He's one of the better backups in football, and I'm a big Tyler Huntley fan. I remember Lamar Jackson saying at one point last preseason, I hope I never have to face him as the starter with another team. And you know what? If if Jackson, when Jackson, if he ever signs his long-term contract, it's not like they're going to have the luxury of keeping Huntley around. It's going to be a Tyrod Taylor situation. Tyrod Taylor was a backup to Joe Flacco at one point. The contract expires. You're not going to pay him to be your backup. He's going to go somewhere else and get a chance to become the guy. And I think it's just a matter of time before Huntley gets a chance to be a starter in Baltimore, if things don't work out with Lamar Jackson or definitely elsewhere. Last one for me. I'm yeah. going with the, the former Longhorn, the guy who was 2-1 and one last year when Kyler Murray was out, Colt McCoy. Sure. Uh, you know, just kind of quietly overlooked. Probably a guy that if he's playing that week, the opposing defense, not as buttoned up, not as as focused on preparation. Uh, Colt McCoy. What the hell's Colt McCoy ever done? Well, he'll he'll... He'll beat you if you give him an opportunity to do so. And he's another guy, even though he was never a franchise guy, he's happy to be part of the game. He's happy to continue to hang around. He's not trying to position himself to be a starter. He understands where he fits in the football hierarchy. And when he gets an opportunity, he he goes out and makes the most of it. I, yeah, he does. You, you can trust him. Again, it's another guy where, you know, I, I don't know if you want him to be your starter, but for three, four-game stretch, you know, he can manage the offense and do the things the right way. It's an interesting conversation when you have here because, you know, I, 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 it, it, there's, there's two different ways to look at backups. So, you know, come in and save the team. I know we picked these guys. But if you made me like go, hey, a backup's got to start the year and do things that way, that's where, I, you know, I forgot we were doing this draft and it caught me off guard a little bit. Um, like Gardner Minshew should be on our list here. You know, Gardner Minshew and Tyler Huntley, I think for an extended period of time, I, I actually think I would trust them more than Case Keenum and Teddy Bridgewater. I would. I think they would make more plays and be better offensively. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means they'll come in in the third quarter of a game and be quite as smooth because they haven't had as much experience maybe as a Tyrod Taylor and those guys. So there is difference in how to look at this backup, and we don't have enough time to, to get in this, but we should have had Gardner Minshew in there too because he's a guy that's I trust big time. And if he gets there, it gets in and there in Philadelphia, just like we, again, we saw him the other night, he just, you know, it's boom, 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 right down the field. And he did that in the regular season last year too when he had a play against the New York Jets. I got tremendous confidence in him as well. I had him on my list, and I still don't know why he's a backup. I don't know why the Seahawks didn't try to trade for him. I'd have more confidence in Gardner Minshew than Geno Smith or Drew Locke if he's the guy that you're saying is our guy. We're going to ride. We're going to do Seattle versus everybody. Russell Wilson wanted out. Our attitude is F all of you. Gardner Minshew is the perfect quarterback for that if that's the vibe that they're trying to create. I, I – I remember last year he was like this forgotten figure, although Urban Meyer was trying to create some stupid-ass quarterback controversy in order to apparently generate more trade value for Minshew. It didn't work. They only got a sixth-round pick for him, which is ridiculous. And and I do think he's a valuable backup yeah. and a viable future starter in the NFL. This is year four for him, I believe. So after this season, he becomes free agent, and it'll be interesting to see. You know, when you start thinking about the guys who will be available – in March, he's a guy that maybe we look at and say, yeah, those you know, teams that are maybe looking for that bridge quarterback or whatever, or just, Hey, we're not sure what we're going to do, but we'll make him the guy. And maybe he can prove to us. He is the guy. And if not, all right, nobody really expected him to be the guy. So then we can continue to look for, for other options out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hear you. And he is one of those guys where, man, if I was Jalen hurts, yeah, I, and you're on that team because that team is stacked. They are one of the best rosters in football where I go, oh, he gets hurt, uh, get healthy in a hurry because Gardner is that kind of guy that we know. It's a lightning rod personality. The team rallies around him, and they're a good football team where you know he could be a, a pain in the butt and start a, a little you know schism, 
uh, as far as the fan base and all that. Is that the right word, schism? I think that's the right word. Wow. Well done, Boom. well done. That that was coined about this time 13 years ago when Brett Favre was about to become a Viking and there was supposedly a schism between the players who wanted Tavares Jackson and those who wanted Brett Favre, and then Favre showed up for one practice, and the schism went away. <laughs> yeah, they said, "Whoa, for the football one He time. throws the ball like that. <laughs> okay, he's there, the quarterback. <laughs> there, there went the schism. Uh, but you know what? It's an entertainment business, and like Favre, Gardner Minshew is extremely entertaining. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of boring quarterbacks out there. Minshew isn't one of them, and and he makes the the game a little spicier if he's on the field or if he's the guy who's talking to the media off the field or whatever. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.